My name is Adam. I'm a student of Dr. Misseldines at Southern Utah University. And today we're going to be exploring the midpoint theorem, which says that every segment has a unique midpoint. And this is in Hilbert's congruence geometry, which has Hilbert's axioms of incidence, betweenness, and congruence. So to start, we're going to just have a segment BC. I'm going to say that the point A is a point off of BC over here. All right. By line determination, there's a line between A and C. And by extension, we can extend that out to another point D. All right. Then we can finish this triangle over here by connecting B and A. And we see that the angle DCB is an exterior angle of the triangle CAB, and most specifically to the remote angle B out here. So this angle must be smaller than angle DCB by the exterior angle theorem, and it must therefore, by, by angle translation, be congruent to an angle inside the half planes created by BCD. And we'll call this point E. And without loss of generality, we're going to go ahead and choose a point E on this uh, ray CE such that CE and AB are congruent. OK, and notice, since E it's on the same side of BC as D. This is on the inside the angle of BCD, and A is on the opposite side of D of BC as D. And then by plane separation, E is on the opposite side of BC as A. And additionally, since by the alternate interior angle theorem, AB and CE are parallel, I'll go ahead and write that. then the point E must therefore be on the inside of the angle BAC, as we show here. And that lets us use the crossbar theorem, because this segment BC, since E is on the inside of it, uh, of the angle BAC, then it must, uh, the ray AE must intersect BC at some point with that crossbar theorem we referenced. And we're going to go ahead and call that point of intersection F. All right. Now, we don't have it as a midpoint yet, but let's go ahead and do some triangle congruences to get that. OK, well, we know that the angle BFA is congruent to the angle EFC because they're vertical angles. So we'll show that. And then by the triangle congruence angle angle side, because AFB, FBA, and the segment BA are congruent to EFC, FCE, and the segment CE, then the triangle ABF is congruent to the triangle CEF. And as corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, and that gives us these segments here that we're looking for, BF and FC are congruent. So by definition, F is the midpoint of B and C. So what that's done so far is given us a midpoint. So we can guarantee a midpoint, but we still need to prove that there's only one, that it's a unique midpoint. So let's switch gears over here, look at another piece. We'll use, we'll use primes over here. So A primes, B, or so we'll use C prime. The segment A prime, C prime over here. Let's say, by way of contradiction, that it has two points that are both the midpoint of A, C prime, A prime, C prime. I want to call those points B and B prime. 
All right, and these aren't related to B over here. This is a different, uh, different example. All right, so by definition, since B is the midpoint of A prime C prime, then AB is congruent to BC. And since B prime is also the midpoint of A prime C prime, then AB prime or A prime, B prime is congruent to B prime, C prime. All right. So if we set up some inequalities, we'll know that A prime, B prime, we know that A prime, B prime, the segment is bigger, without loss of generality, at least, greater than or equal to the segment AB, which is congruent to the segment B C prime. Which is greater than or equal to. The segment B prime C prime. Which is congruent to. A prime B prime. Thus, all these inequalities have to be congruences because a prime b prime is obviously congruent to a prime b prime. So that means that a prime b prime is congruent to the segment a prime b. But since they're both in the same ray, then by uniqueness of segment translation, that means that B equals B prime. Therefore, B is the only unique midpoint of A prime C prime. So we proved over here that midpoints exist. So there's at least one midpoint in every segment. And we proved over here now, there's no more than one unique midpoint of any segment. And that is the midpoint theorem. Thank you for watching.